And we've got three sliders at the bottom here that uh, do some very, very clever work. Now, if you remember in Lightroom, we've got a clarity slider. And what the clarity slider does is it increases local contrast. It looks for areas of the image that have got contrast in them. And, and in those areas, it boosts the contrast quite a lot. And in areas where there's less contrast, it boosts it less. But it's not, it's not like a contrast slider. It does actually use the lightness values in the image that are already there to decide where to boost the contrast. Now, if I drag this detail slider up and down, you'll see that it does very much the same thing, although it's a, a much, much stronger effect. In, in Lightroom, if you drag the clarity slider way up, you wouldn't be able to make it go that far, and that's only just over halfway on the detail slider. If I drag the detail slider right up, you can see that it is possible to go a, a way over the top with this with this tool. But in, in doing that, that gives us the opportunity to see what the detail, sorry, what the depth and the fuzz sliders do. Now, the depth slider is essentially changing, if I drag that right to the bottom, you'll start to see what looks almost like a high-pass filter version of this image. Um, so I think, uh, now uh, I should say, I've, I've not spoken to anybody from, uh, uh, from the Light Zone team about what exactly this is doing. So this is my own uh, trying to figure it out on the fly, what, it, what exactly this is doing, uh, just by dragging these sliders up and down and seeing if I can figure out what it's doing. But what I believe this is doing is, it's doing a local contrast and it's using the data that's already in the image in just the same way that the, the clarity slider does in, uh, in Lightroom. Um, and it's basically making a sort of a high pass mask. And I believe what's going on with this depth slider is that's essentially changing the radius. Um, if, you've, if you play with the high pass uh, filter, you'll know that you can drag the radius up and down to increase or decrease the effect of the edges that it finds. And that, I think, is what this is doing. So um, I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer to, to, to go and have a play with the high pass filter in Photoshop. But if you look, if you drag it right, right down, it's, it's starting to enhance the detail. But let's go to the one-to-one -one here and then just drag this viewpoint down to the detail in the castle. If I drag that detail slide, that depth slider right up, you can see that it sort of it starts to become a little bit more more blotchy, and it's doing sort of larger blobs of of contrast change. If I drag it right down to the bottom, you can see that it sort of goes a lot flatter, but it starts to it starts to look like you know, the brickwork comes out more. So, I believe what that's doing is changing the radius of the um, the the high pass mask that it's doing. So let's just let's just leave that somewhere in the middle and then let's quickly play with the fuzz the fuzz slider. And if I drag the fuzz slider right up, you can suddenly see big halos around the edges here. So I, I think probably what that's doing, uh, just based on the name fuzz, I'm guessing that that's blurring that high pass mask a little bit, which is why we're starting to see some of these contrast enhancements maybe go a little bit outside the lines of what it is we're trying to uh, to edit there. So uh, I, I may be completely off the mark with what those sliders do, but I, I, I can tell you certainly the effect that they have, and I find that uh, ad enhancing the, the fine detail, you probably want to drag the depth down, um, and the fuzz slider, you just want to get that set so that it's not um, revealing too much of those ha those halos. In my case, I'm going to leave the, the fuzz right down at uh, 0 0.1, which is the lowest setting. And in this case, because I'm not so interested in that fine detail there, let's go back to the fit to, view, fit to screen view. I'm more interested in the overall contrast here. So I'm going to let the, the depth slider go way, way up. Now, I've, I've been doing all of this with the detail slider right up, banged up to the, to the, to the maximum. And obviously, that's, that doesn't look good. It, it is possible with this detail slider to, to give it one of those sort of bad HDR uh, styles. It is great for pulling out detail on the uh, on the castle and the stonework and in the and in the rocks, but it's 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 drawing the eye away from what I wanted with this image, uh, and it is important. I've said this many many times. It's important to have a plan for what you're trying to do with this image. Um, that you know, in some ways, I love the detail that it's revealing here, but that isn't what I had in mind for this image. This image, to me, is about the light. It's about the way the light is flowing over the hill, and over this grass, and and hitting the side of the castle. And in, in by putting all that contrast into the detail there, I'm not going to be able to draw my viewers' attention to what I want them to see, which is the way the light is flowing through the image. So I'm gonna I'm going to deliberately uh, back that detail side right off and just say, look, I, I, that's not what I want you to see. That's not what we're here for. So I'm going to leave that detail slider 
around about the three mark. I mean, as you can see, I, I could go somewhere a lot, a lot stronger, but uh, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to have the courage of my convictions and stick to what it is that I'm actually here to do, which is uh, which is to concentrate on the light. So. Um, the depth is all the way up, my fuzz is all the way down, uh, my detail is at around about 3, which is just giving me a little bit more definition. Let's turn that layer on and off and see what that's doing for us. Um, that's that's doing a nice job of just pulling back detail in the foreground. Um, the the detail slider is helping us just bring up some of that, that detail that might be lost in, in the low information, darker areas of the source image. And that's a pretty good place to uh, to pause on that one. Now let's go to um, another zone mapper layer. Now, because this is layers in much the same way as layers in Photoshop, we also have blending modes just like we do in Photoshop. Um, now it's right here at the bottom of the the layer data, and as you can see, we've got pretty much the same kind of blending modes that we have in Photoshop. Now, if you remember, one of the things that I regularly do for darkening, lightening, and increasing contrast is just adding a curves layer to the image, and uh, and I change the blending mode to uh, so it, to brighten, I would choose screen; to darken, I would choose multiply; and to uh, to increase contrast, I would choose overlay or soft light. And we can do exactly the same thing here. So if I use multiply, look, that darkens everything down. The sky looks fantastic, but we've totally lost the ground. Um, if I wanted to brighten, I could use screen, and as you can see, that brightens everything up quite nicely. If I wanted to increase contrast, I could use overlay, and as you can see, that again does a lovely job with the sky. It, it, it's increasing the contrast in the ground. We haven't lost the foreground quite so much, but it, it is still pretty dark in our source image here, so it is going to lose a lot of that data. What I want to do here is I want to use the screen mode just to generally brighten things up. And what I'm trying to do, at the same time as pushing the sky and the ground closer together in terms of their values, I don't want to break the image so, so much in Lightroom that uh, that it, we start to get uh, problematic areas. What I'm trying to achieve here in Light Zone is just get the image so that I've got good source data. I'm then going to take it back in a minute into Lightroom just to do that finishing off that uh, that, that I think the image needs in the end with colour and stuff. Um, so here I'm just going to do a screen. I'm, I'm, I don't want it quite that strong, but somewhere there-ish. I'm just going to let that back it off. Um, it's difficult. One of the things that's very difficult um, is to make these changes step by step and not sort of be affected by what we could see a minute ago. Um, my first reaction when putting the screen layer on is that suddenly it looks too bright, but it, I I, I know in my head that the only reason it looks too bright is because a minute ago it was quite a lot darker. Uh, sometimes you need to have the courage of your convictions and sometimes you just need to, to proceed even though it looks like you might have overcooked the edit. Leave it up there and then if if later on you still feel that it's too strong then back it off. But don't, don't just you know um, get totally tunnel vision on this thing. It's possible to get sort of blinkered and totally affected by what you could see a minute ago. Um, and uh, and sort of get stuck, um, never making drastic edits because sometimes you do need to make drastic edits. So let's just do one final tweaking layer. We'll do another zone mapper layer, um, and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing as last time. I'm going to try and find a midpoint, and the midpoint in this case is around about five lines down, so around about there. And I'm going to just do another little edit just to try and pull a little bit more detail into the sky. And because I've anchored that midpoint there, I'm not affecting the ground at all. I'm just affecting the the, the tones that are in the sky. Oops, I managed to... Let's do that again. So, line 5, we anchor that. Line 3, just drag that down. And you can see that the uh, we get much more tonality just in the sky. And that's because we're just playing with those tones that are in the sky. Oh, one of the other things I should mention, by the way, we have two options in the zone mapper here. We can choose luminosity or we can choose RGB. And what this is doing is it's it's offering us the choice of doing uh, the tonality edit on just the luminosity data or on the RGB data. Now, the RGB sometimes work beautifully for you. If you're if you're increasing contrast, that will sometimes boost your colors uh, and give you some wonderful color uh, effects. Um, now, we're going to manually boost the colors because I want to do quite a lot of color work on this in Lightroom in a minute. But uh, in many occasions, you, it is worth just flicking back and forth between the luminosity and RGB. They will sometimes give you, I don't know whether you can see it in the sky here, just look at the blue in the sky as I switch back and forth between RGB and luminosity. 
that's RGB and you can see it's just a little bit richer blue and that's luminosity and that's a that's a, a flatter blue so in this case I'm going to I'm sticking with everything on luminosity because I know I'm going to do all my color work back in Lightroom in a minute but um, but that RGB is certainly worth playing with sometimes um, now let's just see if there's anything I can do for the for the ground here um, I do think we could stand to go just a little bit brighter with the ground, so I'm just going to pick one of the mid-tones. So remember, all of these tones down here, these are, and you can see these lighting up in this image here as I drag over them. All these tones are all in the ground, and you can see we've got loads and loads of tonal data in the ground there, lots and lots of detail. It's, it's beautiful amounts of detail. And uh, the sky uh, is spread over a comparatively small number of tones, but 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 this this ground here, we're having uh, it to, to really work to pull that data out so I think just a little bit more brightness in the ground there isn't going to hurt us at all so I've just picked one of the middle tones in the ground and just drag that up so just to just to explain my, my the way I'm working here um, because I wanted to edit the sky and the ground separately what I did was I found a middle tone between the sky and the ground and locked that in place and that allows me whenever I then edit any tones above that line I'm working on just the sky and whenever I edit any tones below that line, I'm working on just the ground. And the reason I'm, I can separate the two like that is by locking that middle tone that is part way between the sky and the ground. So that's a pretty good way of uh, of working with those um, zone mappers here in Light Zone. That that tool there, I have not seen anything like it in any other application. Uh, if you're really thinking a lot about tonality in your images and the way that the that the tones in the various parts of the image uh, relate to each other that is absolutely one of the best the best tools I've seen around for doing it you can sometimes achieve these same effects with other tools in uh, in Lightroom and in Photoshop and all the rest but uh, actually in terms of visualizing it and really seeing what it is you're doing I, I do think this this zone mapper has uh, a, a great many advantages over those other those other applications so let's just quickly see where, how far we've come with this image because we've worked, moved sort of fairly slowly we've only done four layers there's not a lot of layers in there. Uh, we've got that original zone mapper layer, a relight layer, then we've got a general brightening layer and some final tweaking. Um, and if I go back to the original, that's how it looked originally when it came in. And that's how it looks now. And uh, hopefully, if we've done our job well, it looks... Uh, it's it's never going to look perf completely natural because we are brightening the ground a lot. I mean, obviously, originally the ground was very dark, and I want to get it back to sort of normal photographic levels. Um, so it's it's going to always have a slight sort of HDR feel about it. But if we do our job well, then hopefully it's minimised and it's believable, and it's you know, and it gives us the material we need to do that final um, that final uh, bit of work on it. Um, and just once again taking a moment to plan what we're going to do the things that strike me about this image at the moment the sky is still not got nearly enough color in it the ground has got a lot of color in it and probably needs to go down quite a bit so that we can balance out the the um, the colors in the sky and the colors in the ground and also I'm still not seeing that yellowness on the ground that I know was there when I was st stood looking at the sunset and looking at the way the color was catching the uh, catching the ground we're starting to see a little bit of the orange on the side of the castle here. But photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.